In this video, we'll review how to graph polynomial functions. To begin, let's talk about the degree of a polynomial. The degree of a polynomial is the largest exponent of the polynomial. It's helpful to understand how the end behavior of the polynomial will work. If you have an even degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient, that is, if the number in front of the term with the largest exponent is positive, and it's an even exponent, then as x goes to negative infinity, f of x will go up towards infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, f of x will still go towards positive infinity, meaning the end pieces will look like this. If instead it's an even degree polynomial with a negative leading coefficient, then it's going to do the opposite for the end behavior. As x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes down towards negative infinity, and as x goes to positive infinity, f of x will still go down towards negative infinity, meaning the end behavior looks like this. If instead it's an odd degree polynomial, then the end behavior is going to go in different directions. As x goes to negative infinity, f of x will go to negative infinity, provided that you have a positive leading coefficient. If um, x goes to positive infinity, then f of x also goes to infinity, meaning you get a graph looking like this. If it's an odd degree polynomial with a negative co leading coefficient, then it's going to be the reverse. As x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes up towards infinity, and as, f of, as x goes to uh, positive infinity, f of x goes down towards negative infinity. It's the reverse. Now let's look at some examples of how to use this. In our first problem, we have f of x equals negative quantity x minus 2 times quantity x plus 1. We need to first figure out what type of function is. If we were to multiply this out, the negative x times x times x would be negative x cubed. x to the third tells me this is a cubic function. Because it's a negative x to the third, I know that the end behavior will be, as x goes to negative infinity, f of x will rise towards infinity, meaning the left will go up, and as x goes to positive infinity, f of x goes down towards negative infinity, meaning the right will go down. We can use the zero product property to find the x-intercepts. If we substitute f of x equals zero, we get zero equals negative x times the quantity x minus two times the quantity x plus one, and then we can split it to solve. This means x equals zero, x equals two, and x equals negative one are the roots of this function. As the x-intercepts, those would be zero, zero, two, zero, and negative one, zero. The y-intercept can be found by doing f of zero. If we substitute in zero for x, we get negative zero times the quantity zero minus two, times the quantity 0 plus 1. Now I don't need to go any further on solving this because I know that 0 times anything is 0. I could have also looked at the x-intercepts. If an x-intercept 0, 0, then the y-intercept is also 0, 0, because that is the only point that has 0 for both x and y. Now we're ready to look at the sketch. A sketch is going to be a quick graph. For the sketch, we need to know what the x-intercepts are. We're going to plot those. We need to know what the y-intercept is. We'll plot that. We'll plot the end behavior, and then match it to the, what we know about the um, features of the function. So in this case, we know the x-intercepts are 0, 0, negative 1, 0, and 2, 0. We know that there is no multiplicity here, meaning nothing is squared or cubed as far as the factors, so that at each x-intercept, the curve will pass through and go to the next point. We know that the left was going to go up, and we know that the right was going to go down, and then we can just connect it up to make it almost look like a wave. Now let's take a look at a little bit uh, tougher example. In the next one, we have g of x equals the quantity x minus 4 times the quantity x squared plus 4x minus 5. Spend a moment, figure out what type of function this is, and what the end behavior will be. I'll give you a minute to think about it. Well, the x times x squared is going to make x to the third. This is going to be a cubic function. The end behavior, because it's a positive x to the third, will go as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes down towards negative infinity, and as x goes to positive infinity, f of x will go towards positive infinity. For the x-intercepts, I'm going to have to do a little bit more work here. The quantity x squared plus 4x minus 5 is not factored, so I need to factor that piece out. I know that numbers that multiply to be negative 5 and add to be 4 would be 5 and negative 1. So g of x equals the quantity x minus 4 times the quantity x plus 5 times the quantity x minus 1. Using the zero product property, my roots would be 4, negative 5, and positive 1. Meaning my x-intercepts in turn would be 4, 0, negative 5, 0, and 1, 0. 
To find the y-intercept, we're going to substitute 0, 0. Sorry, we're going to substitute x equals 0. In this case, that should be g of 0. g of 0 equals the quantity 0 minus 4 times the quantity 0 plus 5 times the quantity 0 minus 1. That is, g of 0 is negative 4 times 5 times negative 1, which is 20. The y-intercept is 0, 20. Again, that should be g of 0, not f of 0. For the sketch, I know where the x-intercepts are. I know that we have an x-intercept at negative 5, 0, 1, 0, and 4, 0. I also have the y-intercept at 0, 20. Because there is no multiplicity, none of the factors are squared or cubed, the, none of the points are going to have a bounce. They're going to go through, pass through, and head towards the other one. It's going to look like a wave. On the left, um, negative 5, 0 is going to have an end behavior where it's going to go down from there, and 4, 0, it's going to go, as it goes to the right, it's going to go up. In between, it's going to pass through and carry on to the next point, again, like a wave. The graph will look like this. I know it's going to do this because we have no multiplicity, meaning it passes through at each of uh, the x-intercepts. The end behavior on the left is down, the end behavior on the right is up, and we're just going to go ahead and draw the curve in to fit the points in between. Now let's take a look at an example of a problem that has multiplicity. For example 3, f of x equals the quantity x plus 2 squared times the quantity x minus 1 squared. Because we have the quantity squareds in the factors, we have multiplicity. When I do the x-intercepts, um, I know that this is going to have only two x-intercepts. There's four factors, but because of the repeated factors, we only have two x-intercepts. We know that when you solve this, x plus 2 equals 0, meaning one of the roots is negative 2, and x minus 1 equals 0, meaning x equals positive 1. The x-intercepts are only going to be negative 2, 0, and 1, 0. Even though this is a fourth degree polynomial, the multiplicity means that there's only going to be two x-intercepts. The y-intercept will be found by doing f of 0, in which case 0 plus 2 is 2, 0 minus 1 is 1, negative 1, but the 2 squared is 4, and the negative 1 squared would be 1. 4 times 1 is 4. The y-intercept is 0, 4. Because this is a fourth degree polynomial with a positive coefficient, the end behavior on this one is both are going to go up. So as x goes to negative infinity, f of x rises towards infinity, and as x goes to infinity, f of x rises again towards infinity. Plotting the x-intercepts, again, there's only two of them, and the y-intercept, I've got to figure out what this graph is going to look like. Spend a moment and see if you can figure out what I should do from here. I'll give you a moment. Because our factored form was the quantity x plus 2 squared, at the negative 2 we have multiplicity, meaning this is going to act like a parabola. And because we have x minus 1 squared, again we have multiplicity, so at 1, 0 we're going to get something that mimics a parabola. In which case, you're going to have almost two parabolas stuck together. This is going to look a little bit like a w. Because it has end behavior both going up, the graph is going to look like this. It's going to rise to the right of 1, 0, and it'll also rise a little bit to the uh, left of 1, 0. However, it's going to stop, go back towards the negative 2, 0, and then, once it passes through, rise up again. Because of the multiplicity, it will never pass through. Instead, it hits the x-intercepts and kind of bounces back. All right, I hope this video helped you to understand how to graph the um, polynomial functions, and thank you for watching.